Quote 10, Stephen Fry. If I had a large amount of money, I should found a hospital for those whose grip upon the world is so tenuous that they can be severely offended by words and phrases, yet remain all unoffended by the injustice, violence and oppression that howls daily. So, I'm in Tulla, on my way to Gort, and I believe it's uh, 25 kilometres that way, and all uphill, so I'm going to have to uh, endure a bit of hard work today, but uh, I, uh, in the in the cafe I was just inside eating, and uh, there were some guards there, three guards, so um, they were curious as to, you know, what I was up to, and spoke to me and I spoke to them about the blasphemy law and uh, neither of the guards knew anything about the blasphemy law at all. So Margaret and Fergus, what does blasphemy mean to you? What does blasphemy mean to you? What does blasphemy mean to me? Um, it's a religious concept. It's, um, I don't think it has any place really in a secular society. Um, what does blasphemy mean to me? It generally means things like fatwas and extremism and yeah. um, what does it mean to you? Yeah, that's, that, that covers it, I think. Covers what I, think. That's what I don't think it's a part. partner of tolerance and respect it's very and well maturity. Very well put. That's what I think anyway. The, the whole idea of blasphemy. It's a many evil concept. Yeah. Like it's something from prehistory almost. It's just. I'm trying to think, could blasphemy, could one of the reasons for, for this whole concept of blasphemy be an incitement to hatred or to violence? And I don't actually think blasphemy plays a part in that. I think it's it's a red herring. Mm. That's what I think. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, why should religion get protected? Religious ideas when other ideas aren't. Like, why not have laws protecting art from people saying nasty things about art or sport? Sport causes more trouble and gives more insult and uh, causes more trouble than religion nowadays. So, like, why why isn't it a crime to say that Manchester United suck? Yeah, you know, that should be a blasphemy. Yeah, if you're going to go down that road of protecting ideas, I mean, I believe in protecting people, but the idea of protecting ideas. Yes, yes, that's and, uh, true. Why, why should an idea or a concept be beyond argument or beyond debate or beyond discussion or beyond, beyond ridicule. ridicule? Beyond ridicule, yeah. 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 So do you think blasphemy should be criminalised? No. That's no. I think to criminalise it is an attack on free speech. It's yeah. an attack on the, the right of free expression. Um, I think it, it's a way of curtailing, uh, curtailing thought, curtailing exploring ideas, um, actually, curtailing philosophy in a way. Yeah, yeah, it's actually more sinister because it's not, it's not curtailing a negative, it's actually endorsing the positive that religions are in some way superior and therefore those who have religions are superior to those who don't. And it's actually, it's actually copper fastening in some of the more barbaric aspects of religion, yeah. uh, which in the future are coming our way from the East, you know, where all religions come from. Uh, so they're, they're actually being endorsed to some extent by this. You know, this, this weakens the Salman Rushdie's and... Uh, yes, the, Maya, here's the Ali. Yeah, that very woman I was thinking of. Mm. It, it's, it's weakening their position. Yes, they, if, if Catholic Ireland brings in a law saying you must not blaspheme, I mean, these people are already under death sentence the other religion. thing is that the definition of blasphemy seems to rest solely with uh, religious organisations. So that 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 is so wide open that it can be used to to cover any kind of debate or discussion. Mm. You, can't, you can't actually say in a law or you mm. know what is blasphemy, what is not, because it's it's up to those religious leaders to decide what is and what is. That's right, and so, so they actually dictate the It's an open-ended laws. thing. Yeah. It's, it's a very powerful weapon. Mm. Um, and it does seem to, as you say, endorse extremism. Mm. It's, uh, it's not a protection of, of, uh, of any principles. Mm. Um, and it's a way of, of shutting down satire as well, which is a very important part of any debate. Um, certainly for the likes of stand-up comedians or any mm. comedians or writers or mm. anything. It's a way of, of just of choking them off. Of not, uh, of not allowing debate and discourse. I'm starting to see some stand-up comedians yeah. mightn't be a bad thing. <laughs> I think the ludicrous thing in Ireland was that the minister said um, he was going to bring in this law and not implement it. Mm. I mean, the thicker wing of the government brought this in. Mm. Know, for, for whatever reason, we still don't know what was behind it because it seems ludicrous that he suddenly brought it in the middle. 
countries fall down around their ears and they have time to bring in a law endorsing uh, anti blasphemy. I mean, that's so ludicrous. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's making the laugh and stuff for the country. So Bertie Heron was saying, you know, like, um, like the image of Ireland abroad, he was mm. talking about that. But this, I mean, has, I mean, people coming into Ireland from plane loads from America, um, but when they realise that this thing is going on here, it's just really embarrassing. It's hard not to see it as a, as a retrograde step, as a stepping backwards to like mm. the 1950s in Ireland when we had worked so hard to, to become uh, kind of uh, mm. forward looking Europeans, yeah. dynamic go getting people. Mm. So, uh, it would be blasphemy to criticise leprechauns, for instance. Like, you know, I mean, that's, that's, they, they could have a law on leprechauns. If they can have a law like this, they can have a law on leprechauns. Or, you know, the stump down at where's that place? The Holy Stump. The Holy Stump. Would it be, you oh. know, if you just said, well, that's a third class relic now. You want to be careful there. Well, you would be smitten. So if you said that, down. throw that on the fire there. <gasps> would that, <laughs> would that last from, uh-huh. from a woman? Yeah, it's, it's a backward step. Um, mm. Hard to see any rationale behind it. And mm. Not something uh, that I would be comfortable with, or that I am comfortable with, in the society in which I live. Mm. That's great. Thank you very much. I'm on the road to Galway. Galway's about 20 kilometres this way. And uh, I'm in Kilgolgan. And I'm standing outside an Educate Together National School in Kilgolgan. Now, Educate Together have at least 56 schools throughout Ireland. Now, they are multi denominational primary schools. And they are for children of all social, cultural, and religious and non religious backgrounds being equally respected. Now, Neil Jordan, the writer and director, uh, adds, Coming back to Ireland, I was dreading sending my child to an Irish national school. Not because they are not excellent schools, which they are, but because we are not religious. And wanted him to avail of the kind of secular education that we have experienced abroad. I was thrilled to learn I have an alternative. Quote number 11 from Dave Barry. The problem with writing about religion is that you run the risk of offending sincerely religious people and then they come after you with machetes. I just met Alan in Oranmore. Alan, what are your views about the blasphemy law? Um, well, I'm not in agreement with it. I don't think there's any need for it now um, if we didn't have it in the past. Um, apart from the fact that, you know, who, who decides what blasphemy is, it's, it's a huge fine as well, it's what, 25,000? That's correct, yeah. Um, it's a ridiculous amount of fine, you know, because most likely it's mostly writers, journalists, that kind of thing that are going to be caught by it and, well, you know, they don't have, they don't have that money. So, yeah, I suspect it's probably to do with them, them pictures of Muhammad that, uh, in particular, although I suppose, you know, it's about any, any religion really, but uh, yeah, I don't don't think the the secular institutions can decide really what is blasphemy and what isn't, you know. So, so it's more about interpretation of a blasphemy. It seems to be more about interpretation, you know, and anything. Many many things that are out there now could get pulled up under the blasphemy laws. I'm sure Father Ted probably could have in its time mm-hmm. as well, you know. And South Park you mentioned. So um, if they. Every episode, I'm sure, of them would be would be caught for it. But um, no, it's not the right way to approach it. Neither is neither is a right to be, you know, blaspheming just for the sake of it, for shock value. But um, I suppose the audience should decide that really. So, on a personal level, what does blasphemy mean to you? I suppose blasphemy, really, for me, is is in terms of. Uh, a wrong act, blasphemy would be, I suppose, lampooning or making fun of another religion just for the sake of it. However, if you have a point to make by doing that, then then maybe you're entitled to do it. Like, do you do you feel that churches have a right to feel outraged and be able to have the law on their side? Um, I don't feel they do, but I suppose you know, I suppose the government is thinking that they're representing people, believers of, of whichever religion, that they were representing them, you know, on behalf of the state. Uh, so I don't, I suppose they have the right to be outraged, but they don't really have the right to, to sue for it. That's my, that'd be my opinion anyway. Okay, thank you, Alan. All right, thank no you. Problem. Thanks a lot. Cheers. <laughs> Good 
John F. Kennedy, President of the United States of America, became a free man of Galway Borough at this place on the 29th of June 1963. What is freedom of expression? Without the freedom to offend, it ceases to exist. Salman Rushdie. Okay, so I'm uh, sitting here in Galway with Oscar, and uh, the weather's not too great. It's very overcast. It was very rainy earlier on, so it's not a very nice day for walking. But nonetheless, we've got to carry on. But uh, a, a big thank you to the uh, NUIG Skeptic Society, who um, we met in the bar last night and had a few drinks. And thank you to Claire for a lovely meal, ratatouille and red wine. It was delicious. So um, yeah, hitting the road very soon. Reverend David Gold, we'll have a drill point here. Yeah. I am yes. a Christian. It says is I was an atheist for teenagers. It is not possible to insult Christian, God. I would absolutely so for the government to introduce a law based on blasphemy law, I think uh, it should is, be completely scrapped. I think no ideology, um, and it is an and, ideology, and should be above to, reproach to, and should to be to above criticism. It's it's um, vitally important because for a healthy, functioning and secular society. Do you take offence to people that might write or say things that you know go against uh, your own religious Jesus beliefs? Cross, they it's very forgive. difficult they know not what um, they do. declaring that you're a Christian. And people look at you like you're a sort of saying, saying knuckle-dragging lunatic. Go ahead, Harry. You have to accept yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm an agnostic, agnostic, agnostic Damien, and I think there are valuable things to be learned from uh, religion. However, I think that the biggest problems in the world today is fundamentalism. I mean, fundamentalism of any religion. If the world hates you, when remember that it hates me also. Faith, and you have so to accept that it's part you know, and parcel and you have to welcome them and they, they are are able to justify There's absolutely the no way um, that I would accept it you know, at all. I would defend the rights of people who don't agree with me. I would defend the rights of people who think I'm a and consensus. I wouldn't stand for someone treating me differently or treating someone of another faith or whatever they believe in, discriminating against them because of what they believe. That's a different ballgame altogether. But yep. to be free to criticise me, then bring us on. Quote number 13. We believe that the concept of defamation of religion is not consistent with the promotion and protection of human rights. It can be used to justify arbitrary limitations on, or the denial of, freedom of expression. Indeed, Ireland considers that freedom of expression is a key and inherent element in the manifestation of freedom of thought and conscience, and as such is complementary to freedom of religion or belief. That was Michael Martin, Irish Minister for Foreign Affairs, 2009. Now, the minister was replying to a parliamentary question about Ireland's opposition at the United Nations to an Egyptian motion for combating defamation of religion. The Islamic states have been trying to have this passed for a decade now. Since Ireland passed the new blasphemy law last year, the Islamic states have adopted the wording of our law as best practice for international blasphemy laws. And the closest thing to blasphemy I've seen yet on the road is that. <laughs> 